Hello and welcome to another How to Code Well web news this time because I've got some news for you. Um, the W3C recently announced that they have some uh, specifications or the first draft of a specification for the uh, orientation sensor. So I thought that I would do a video because this is actually quite large news in the web development community and the more I delved into this the more I discovered how much the device and sensor group the DAS device and sensor group of W3C are actually doing. I talked about technologies that are on the horizon well this is kind of one of them. So three questions come to mind whenever an announcement like this is made in the industry. The first one is what on earth is it? The second one is why do we need it? And thirdly it's what benefits can we get from this and also what are the impacts what, what is the negatives of this uh, if there is a, a, any at all so let's take a look at those three in a little bit more detail well the first one what on earth is it well the DAS or the device and sensor group of the W3C are creating specifications or drafts of specifications for different types of sensors that are on uh, mobile phones, different devices, tablets, and computers, and so forth. Now, you might be thinking, well, hang on a minute, surely we've got all that. Well, we do, but we don't have particular specifications of how we should uh, create APIs around those things. So this announcement in particular uh, was raised in the 11th of May, and I did tweet about this. If you follow me on Twitter, you, you would have uh, noticed that I had a tweet. Having web standards for these sensors is going to be a huge in years to come. I'm very excited about what this could mean for the web. I started looking into this sensor, and then I started looking into the uh, device and uh, sensor group, and what, what else they've been looking into. And my word, have they been busy. So in this particular this particular sensor, the orientation sensor, it's all about the orientation of the device that you're using. So this is the announcement here. Um, this is the, sorry, this is the working draft. And if I scroll down a little bit here, we can see this, you know, this, this is just the state of the document introduction stuff, but we've actually got examples. We've actually got examples of how that we could possibly use this. And if we scroll down even further, we have different types of methods, um, different types of classes and so forth. And, you know, this is, you know, the orientation of the device, finding the, the Y, the X, as well as the Z coordinates. We've got some funky maths going on here about how to populate the, ma the, the matrix. You know, where whereabouts are you um, in terms of the orientation of stuff? Um, and again, some bits of maths and stuff, the acknowledgements, and then the usual stuff you get on the end of these uh, specifications, you know, the, the, um, the references and so forth. Um, so this deals with the accelerometer, the, um, the, the gyroscope, and the magnometer, um, as well as some other bits and pieces as well. This will basically find out the orientation of the device. So this working draft actually has some examples as well as the interfaces that I used. So if I scroll up a little bit further, we can find that the uh, we've got the absolute orientation sensor interface as well as the uh, the orientation sensor itself. So we've we've got a working draft. We have a working uh, example, and we've got two examples up here um, of how to get the get the sensor information um, from the device. So that's what we've got, why we've got it. Let's talk about that now. Well, we have so many different devices, so many different manufacturers, so many different ways of getting this stuff um, that there isn't a standard for it. So the W3C is all about web standards. This is great in the sense that we now have, or we're starting to have a, a base level of specifications for these types of sensors and I would like to just mention that it isn't just the orientation sensor that the um, the DAS is working on. Um, if I was to click on here the device and sensor working group we can see that um, we have lots this is the, the sensory roadmap lots of sensors that they're actually working on. Uh, so ambient light sensor, proximity sensor, motion sensors, um, the accelerometer gyroscope which I've mentioned the vibration and the battery status. So they have been very busy and these things are sort of bubbling up, if you will, on the horizon of web development. And I would imagine that we're going to be seeing these um, later down the line in several years to come, hopefully. And these will be commonplace. 
it's a bit like how um, certain things happen with HTML5, the lead up to that. So it's not just orientation sensors, that's what I would like to just point out. It's, it's, it's a, a lot of other things that they're working on. So going back to the why here, again, it's all about standardization. It's about keeping a standard that other, um, other players can agree on. We're not following a certain huge company and uh, we're not allowing them to define the standards of these APIs. We're actually creating the APIs that everybody can use. So that's the why. The what does it mean to the rest of you know development? What are the pros and cons to all of this? Really is, um, it kind of goes on with the why a little bit because uh, it means that everything is standardized or a lot of things are being standardized now. It also means that we can use these things for, um, you know, for, for other client-sided technologies. So JavaScript, for example, uh, is a huge player at the moment in mobile applications with things like Titanium and, and so forth. So having uh, JavaScript frameworks that could handle these things um, would be pretty awesome too. So we don't have to natively talk to the phone's operating system to get this information. Um, I can see this paving the way for things like uh, uh, new games coming in. Um, so mo mobile games as well as mapping type applications. Also think about IoT because with IoT of course you've got a whole range of sensors and if there was a way of having a, a uh, defined uh, open source standard of how to access these sensors then we could have a whole raft of new applications coming in. It's not going to be just um, uh, siloed to these manufacturers, it's, it's going to be available for other developers to come on. In my opinion, this is enriching the web development experience because we're allowing these, these uh, APIs to be available so we can create these new applications. So when we say web developer in say 5, 10, 15 years time, we're probably less going to be focused on web sites, but things that access the web, you know, things that talk to other devices on the web. And this is what I really like about web development because it's very organic. Things are influencing this organic beast, which is web development. You've got marketing influencers, you've got uh, technology influencers. This is new technology coming through or new standards of the technology coming through. The hardware is already there. We can already access these sensors. The sensors have been developed. So there's there's all of these these influences and it's molding the way web development is being seen and being used in future years to come. So I'm very excited by this. Anyway, I'm going to leave that there. I would be very interested to hear what you think about uh, this announcement, whether you think this is a good thing, whether you think it's a bad thing, whether this is giving you any ideas or thoughts for new applications or just new ways of using the web in general in the future. I'll be interested to hear from you. Put those comments in the comment section below. Please feel free to follow me on Twitter. My Twitter handle is at PFWD. I tweet about tech and the web quite a lot, so uh, if, do follow me there to uh, follow along. Um, do subscribe if you haven't done so already because I want to talk about the news in the web a, a little bit more. There's some other bits and pieces that I wish to talk about. Do subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. I have uh, some, a load of tutorials, Docker tutorials, HTML tutorials, PHP and even MySQL and some other bits coming along. So do check those out. Thanks again for watching. See you again soon. Happy coding. Cheers.